Clemens passed, Nick passed, Moritz passed, Tobias passed, Chris passed, Nada passed, Jan passed. And here it's me, passed. I could go on and on and on and on, but I think you get the point. These are all campus members who passed the FTMO challenge. And in today's video, I want to share with you my top five tips and tricks to pass any prop trading challenge that comes your way. And by the way, please feel free to scan all the QR codes on the certificates. These are real ones, not like other traders do, posting fake certificates. So without further ado, let's get started. Tip number one, don't treat FTMO or any other prop firm like a lottery ticket. I'm sorry to break it to you, but only with copy trading, EAs, automated funding services, and luck, you will not pass any challenge. Maybe in fact you will, but what the heck is the point of that? Remember, passing the challenge is just the first step. After that, you need to pass the verification stage and start trading real funds. And you haven't had one single payout yet. This is where the true test of your trading skills comes in. I realized after receiving countless of DMs on my socials, traders treat FTMO and other prop trading programs more like a lottery ticket. They don't think about the sustainable impact a funding program can have and ultimately want to force one single payout no matter what. If you've been treating your prop trading account like a lottery ticket, you'll likely find yourself struggling to maintain consistency and profitability over the long term. If this is your way of treating any prop firm, then you are a gambler, but not a professional trader. Tip two, who the heck cares about lot size? You must calculate position size instead. I don't have to tell you that risk management is the key to success in Forex trading. And this is especially true when it comes to passing the FTMO challenge. Make sure you have a solid risk management strategy in place. This should include determining your entry and stop loss points, setting realistic profit targets, and managing your positions once they are open. Let's call this process set, stop entry target. The set must be pre-planned elements. I repeat, the set process must be planned ahead of time. A mind boggling question I receive a lot of times is, hey, how many lots do you trade? To be fully honest, I don't even understand this question because I couldn't care less about my lot size. Someone who asks these questions, no offense, no harm intended, definitely spent too much time in forums like baby pips to collect nuggets, but never learned how to trade professionally. Your lot size is defined by your predefined dollar risk amount or percentage risk, never the other way around. Let me explain it with an animation. So let's assume you want to buy Euro dollar. Could be any other currency pair, it doesn't matter. Now you have to define your set first, ahead of time, pre-planned. Let's say you want to buy Euro dollar at 1.0823 and put our stop loss at 1.0778. This defines our zone, our buy area. We buy when price comes back to our predefined zone. This zone defines our risk either percentage risk, so for instance, you trade a 100k funded FTMO account based on your risk management rules, you're allowed to take 2% risk per trade, consequently 2% risk of a 100k account equals 2k risk per trade. Now, based on the 2k risk, which is the area from your entry to stop loss, you calculate your lot size. Or you say, based on your set of rules, I don't use percentage risk, but a fixed dollar risk amount. By the way, that's how I personally do it. So in this example, based on a 100K funded FTMO account, you could say I risk $1,500 per trade. Again, it's the area from your entry to your stop loss. And based on your dollar risk amount, you will calculate your lot size. Bottom line, do you see how percentage risk or dollar risk determines the lot size you trade and never, 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 never the other way around. This topic belongs to Trading 101 and is really the most basic concept of professional trading. If you still don't know how to calculate position size with MT4 and MT5, you can use a third party tool like the position size calculator, then please leave a comment below. If I see that many of you have issues with that, I will do a separate tutorial. 
Tip number three. Five winning trades are enough. So let me explain my train of thought. Since we hopefully clarified position size, we can now move to target setting. I personally recommend within the entire evaluation phase, one to one risk to reward targets. Risking one in order to make one. So how much should the one risk be? I say 2% risk per trade. The 2% comes with a caveat. I will highlight it in the next tip. So you risk 2% per trade, the 2% will determine your lot size. And your target is 2% as well. Let's make a quick example. You're doing a 100K challenge. So the goal on that 100K challenge is 10%, so 10K. Your risk per trade is 2% on the 100K, so 2K risk per trade. And your profit target is 2K as well. Consequently, one to one risk to reward ratio. By now, you should realize that five winning trades are enough to pass the 30-day challenge. Of course, it's very likely that you won't have a winning streak of five trades from start to finish. But even if you have two to three losers, it is still reasonable to get the 10% within a 30-day period. Tip number four, take highly correlated trades. We don't have enough time to discuss correlations in depth in this video, but it simply means looking for opportunities in markets that are related to each other based on fundamental or technical factors. For example, if you're trading Forex, you may want to look at pairs that are tied to major currencies like the US dollar or the Euro. Alternatively, you may want to look at US equity indices like the Dow Jones, S&P 500 and the Nasdaq that tend to move similarly. Another more advanced example would be trading Apple and Nasdaq at the same time. Now you should be also aware of any potential risks associated with taking correlated trades. And that's a caveat I was mentioning in my previous tip. Again, I want to stress that I recommend trading correlated trades. But when you do so, I would lower my percentage risk either to 1% or if you want to go a bit more aggressive, do 1.5% risk on those trades. Because if those trades move against you, and you stick to your 2% risk per trade, then you might lose 4% and to recover from that drawdown is quite difficult in a challenge environment. I trade by the saying, better safe than sorry. Hence, lower your risk a bit in this case so a stop loss is not devastating and the winner will bring you much closer to pass the challenge. Tip number five, don't scalp. You don't have to go lower than a 60 minute time frame. Besides the fact that I've never met a consistent scalper in my entire 10 years of professional full-time trading career, the point I want to make here is that you don't have to rush. 30 days is still a lot of time. Patience is key and higher time frame movement is much easier to anticipate anyways. Because you're not exposed to all the noise in the market. If you follow all my tips above, you in fact can trade intervals between 240 minutes and daily. For my challenge, I never went lower than a 240 minute interval. Another benefit with this method that I call set and forget and get a life approach, you can start and pass a challenge while having a busy life outside trading. Whether you have a full-time job, going to college, family, kids, social obligations, you name it. With this approach, you can easily juggle all of it. So there you have it. My top tips for passing the FTMO challenge. Before you start the challenge, it's essential that you read and understand the rules. FTMO has specific guidelines that traders must follow, and it's important to know them inside out. Make sure you're familiar with the maximum drawdown limit, trading period, and the profit target. This will help you better plan your trading strategy and avoid unnecessary risks. Remember, passing the challenge requires discipline, patience, and a solid trading strategy. With these tips in mind, you're ready to take on the challenge and succeed. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for more useful trading content. Good luck with your trading journey and I'll see you in the next video. Happy trading.